Customer Router 2 is forwarding traffic to Customer Router 3 via Customer Router 5 and then ISP Router 6. So we've got the first part done where ISP Router 6 is the primary, but now we need to configure ISP Router 1 as the backup and ISP Router 4 as the secondary backup. So what I'm gonna do is manipulate autonomous system path on Customer Router 2. I'm not gonna use weight because weight will override the use of local preference. Weight has a higher precedence than local preference. So on customer router two, router BGP 65,000, neighbor 8112, route map. Let's set a local preference of 180. The reason why I'm using 180 is remember customer router five is setting the local preference to 200. The higher the number, the more likely that it's gonna be chosen. Higher numbers win. And then I'll set the neighbor relationship to 822 to 150. So routes learned from ISP router six will have a local preference of 200. Routes learned from ISP one will have a local preference of 180. Routes learned from ISP router four will have a local preference of 150. So I've got to create the route maps now. So route map set a local preference 180 enter or permit 10 if you prefer set a local preference 180 do something similar for set a local preference 150 so that's 150 and i actually made a mistake there let's go back that should be 180 not 1880 so show run forward slash BGP. Let's confirm our configuration. That looks good. This route map is being referenced over here. This route map is being referenced over here. Show IP BGP. Notice we can see the local preferences being set on routes already. So scrolling down, notice for this network, Router 5 is the preferred path, then ISP Router 1, and then ISP Router 4. And we can test that. So let's see what happens when we do a trace to 17122. It's going via 17113, which is customer router 5. On customer router 5, I'll shut the BGP neighbor relationship to ISP router six to simulate a problem. So neighbor 8192 shut. So now let's see what happens when we trace from customer router two. It's going uh, via ISP router one. And I'll do something similar when I shut the neighbor relationship to ISP router one. Traffic is going via ISP router four. But when I no shut the neighbor relationship, we should be going back via ISP router one, which we are. So do that again, going via ISP router one. And on customer router five, if I no shut the relationship to ISP router six, we should now once again be going via ISP router six, which we are. Customer router five, ISP router six. So we've proven that traffic is going correctly outbound on these routers. Let me show you the configuration again. So on customer router five, it's getting fairly complex at this point, but notice we've got a route map configured to ISP router six, where we're setting the local preference. We've got a route map to customer router one. We're also advertising a default route this route map is setting the local preference to ensure that customer router five is preferred. On customer router two, show run begin BGP. We've got this route map and this route map. This prefix list is being used here 
we're advertising a default route to customer router one. We've got a local preference of 180, configured for routes learned from ISP one. Local preference of 150 set for routes learned from ISP router four. But we're not finished yet. We still need to manipulate how traffic comes back into the autonomous system. So how are we going to manipulate traffic sent back into our autonomous system? At the moment, on customer router three, when we trace to customer router one, the traffic is going to ISP router five, then to ISP router three, and then to ISP router one, and then to customer two. So we've got asynchronous routing here. Outbound, it's going this way. Inbound, it's arriving back on this link. So how can we try and manipulate BGP to forward traffic back onto this link? One of the easiest ways to do that is autonomous system path prepending. On ISP router seven, right over here, if I try and trace to 17111, notice it's also going via customer router two. And that's because in the BGP routing table, it's decided that this is a better path. It could go via 8.1.12.1, which is the customer. We don't want it to do that. It's taking this path, but not this path. So we want to forward the traffic this way. So in customer router two, I'm going to implement AS path prepending to add additional autonomous system numbers to the AS path for advertisements going out to the ISPs. So router BGP, 65,000, neighbor 8.1.1.2, route map, AS prepend. You could choose another name here if you wanted to. I'm gonna do the same for ISP router four. Route map, AS prepend, permit 10, set. What are we gonna set? We're going to set the AS path. So set AS path, prepend. You have to prepend your own number. I'll do that three times here to add to those as additional autonomous system numbers. And I'll clear the BGP routing table. So now on ISP router seven, if we trace to that IP address, notice we've manipulated the traffic to go via ISP router six. Traffic is going this way. What about on customer router three? So on customer router three, if we trace to customer router one, and notice it's coming in via customer router five. So the traffic is going to ISP router five, ISP router three, ISP router four, ISP router six, customer five, and then to customer one. So on ISP router one, let's see if we can see a difference. Show IP BGP. Notice for this route, we see this. ISP router one believes that it's better to send traffic to ISP router six rather than directly to customer router two. The AS path via customer router two is a lot longer than via ISP router six. So if I trace to 17111, this router is forwarding traffic along this path to that destination. It's not sending it directly to customer router two. So we've forced traffic outbound via ISP router six, and we're forcing traffic back in via ISP router six. Again, we may want to do that because this is a higher speed link than these links. BGP allows you to have a lot of granular control over what you do with routing updates. Again, even though GNS3 has all of these links as gigabit links, we may decide to prefer this ISP over ISP router one and ISP router four. Let's have a look at what ISP router four does. Show IP BGP. We are also seeing prepending of the autonomous system number. So if we trace to 17111, traffic is going via ISP router six, customer five to get to customer one. So that looks good. 
we've manipulated the BGP tables by making changes to customer router two and prepending our own autonomous system number multiple times so that the path looks better via customer router five instead of customer router two. Now that we've made the changes to autonomous system number 65,000, we need to manipulate the traffic in autonomous system number 65,002.